Pythagoras' theorem. This is our core review. So Pythagoras' theorem is by this guy called Pythagoras, who worked it out a very long time ago. That's why it's named after him. And it's about right-angled triangles. That is, triangles where the largest angle in it is 90 degrees, a right angle. It's marked often by that little square or just by 90 degrees. Now we need to know a bit about how to label a right-angled triangle. Pythagoras' theorem only works with right-angled triangles, but it's pretty important for those. The longest side of the right-angled triangle doesn't touch the right angle. You'll see these are the two short sides and they touch the right angle. They make up the right angle. But the longest side is opposite the right angle at the ends of those two sides. And it's got a special name, the hypotenuse. And in Pythagoras' theorem, in the formula, we call this side C. The two shorter sides don't have special names like hypotenuse, and they get labeled A and B, and it doesn't matter which short side is which, as long as one is A and one is B. But you've got to make sure that the hypotenuse is C for the formula. Sometimes in questions, people will call it other things. So we've got a question down here, and they've called the hypotenuse X, and that's fine, but in our formula, we start with it as C. And so we'll look at what the formula is, but what it means as well. Because all that the formula says is if you measure the sides of a right angle triangle, or if you told them, so that's three centimeters, and this one's four centimeters, because you can tell from the grid lines. If you make a square, on each of those sides. So this one would have to come out three centimeters. Oops, I can use a ruler, there we go. We've got a three centimeter one over here. We'll make a four centimeter one here. If we find the areas of those squares that we've just drawn, counted in centimeters squared or meters squared or whatever it is, the two smaller squares on these shorter sides will add up to the area of the big square, that's five centimeters, on this side. I'm trying to get this one right here, this, one, this one's a little bit harder. And we can check this in a number of ways. So on this one, because I've got three centimeters, four centimeters, and five centimeters, I could count the number of centimeters squared in this square. And the area of a square is side times side. So this was three times three which is nine squares, side times side, and we can count by dividing it up into centimeters squared, four times four, that's 16 squares. And this one's a little trickier to divide up into squares because it's on a diagonal. But if we did it, we'd discover that five times five is 25 squares. And there's definitely 25 centimeter squares in that. And these nine plus these 16 equals these 25. Now you can pr prove this or show this in all sorts of ways. You can cut up the little squares and fit everything that fit in there into that big square. You can do that in all sorts of ways with triangles and stuff. And 
That is really Pythagoras' theorem. This side squared equals this side squared plus this side squared. And to write that, c squared, because that's how we got the area, squared means times by itself, c is 5 centimetres, so 5 times 5 gets me the area of that square, that's c squared, is equal to a squared plus b squared. That's how we got Pythagoras' theorem, and that's what it's saying. Now we don't need to draw those squares to use Pythagoras' theorem, that is just showing us how it works. And the first way that we could use it is finding the length of the hypotenuse when we don't know it. So this is our first big important C grade skill. Here's a right angled triangle. We know the two short sides, but we don't know the hypotenuse and we'd like to find it. So I'm going to write the steps that we use over here and we'll do the working here. So the first one is to write the formula. We start every Pythagoras' theorem question with c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Then our next step is to substitute in the values that we know. And we get those from the diagram. C is the hypotenuse. It's the longest side. They've called it x, so we'll call it x, and we want it squared. A and B, it doesn't matter which is which. Let's make this A, 3.5, and we've got to square it, plus B, 4.5, and we'll square it. So our next step is to find C squared, the hypotenuse squared, which here is X squared. So we keep going, and we work out this, and you'll need a calculator for that. 3.5, here's the squared button, plus 4.5 squared, and that's 32.5. But that is x or c squared. That's the area of the square here. We just want the hypotenuse, c, and they've called it x, and that's okay. And to get rid of the squared, we learn, do what we learned about the other day. We do the opposite of squared, which is we square root this number. And that will get us x. And so we go back to our calculator. Square root is here over the squared button, and we've got to use second. So second, square root, 32.5 equals, and that's 5.7. And that's in meters, so we say meters. And that's 5.7 meters. Sometimes when you have to do a square root, if I'd had 35 instead, 32.5, we get a funny answer. It says, oh, well, it's just the square root of 35. And that's not very helpful. There's this button here, which says, please give me a decimal answer. And it would give you a decimal answer. So that's how to use Pythagoras' theorem to find the hypotenuse and a little bit of explanation about what it actually means.